Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're proving a pretty straightforward set theory result. That if A and B are two sets, then A is a subset of B if and only if A intersect B is equal to A. I recently did a lesson proving a very similar result to this one involving the union of A and B instead of the intersection of A and B. I recommend giving this proof a try, try proving this, and then try seeing if you can figure out what that similar result is for set union, assuming you haven't already seen my other lesson, and then go check out that one. I'll leave a link in the description. So first thing to notice, of course, is that this is an if and only if or by conditional statement. So we've got to show that if A is a subset of B, then A intersect B is equal to A. Then we need to show the other direction, that if A intersect B is equal to A, then A is a subset of B. So given either piece of information about two sets, we can conclude that the other piece is true. That is the beauty and the power of a biconditional theorem. Before we jump into the proof, I just want to say, uh, like I did in my other lesson, I think this is a pretty easy to understand result. So if we've got a set B that has some subset A, what is the intersection of these sets? Well, clearly it's A, that piece in the middle. Uh, the stuff inside of A is in both A and B. So that is their intersection. And then conversely, if the intersection of some set B with some set A is just A, then it must be the case that all of the elements in A are in B. Otherwise, the intersection of A and B wouldn't be equal to A. And so that means that A must be a subset of B. So I think it's pretty clear, um, but nothing makes it more clear than a proof. So let's jump into a proof, and then we don't have to worry about all the pictures and whatnot. We can just worry about the logic. So for the first direction, let's assume that A is a subset of B. And then we want to show that A intersect B is equal to A. I'll leave the assumption in blue, and we'll write the rest of the proof, let's say in red, or at least the rest of this direction. To prove that A intersect B is equal to A, we need to show that A intersect B is a subset of A, and A is a subset of A intersect B. So for starters, let's say if we've got some element X of A intersect B, we need to show that this is also an element of A. And of course, by definition of intersection, X must be an element of A and an element of B. Since X is an element of A intersect B, by definition of intersection, X is an element of A and X is an element of B, and therefore A intersect B is a subset of A. I just wrote B, I meant uh, A. It's also a subset of B, but uh, we're interested in that statement. It is a subset of A. Then we just need to show that A is a subset of A intersect B which uh, is where we're going to need to use our assumption. So let's say if, if we've got some element x in A, how can we show that A must be in A intersect B? Well, since A is a subset of B, that pretty much gets us there. x is an element of A, A is a subset of B, so by definition of subset, x is an element of B. So x is an element of A, x is an element of B, thus by definition of intersection, x is an element of A intersect B. And there we go. So that tells us every element in A is also in A intersect B, and therefore A is a subset of A intersect B. Since A is a subset of A intersect B, and A intersect B is a subset of A, we have that A is equal to A intersect B. Whew, don't want to breathe into the mic. That completes the first direction of the proof. We've shown that if A is a subset of B, then A intersect B is equal to A. So I'm going to erase this. Take a look. Pause the video if you need to. Make sure you understand this direction of the proof. I'm going to erase it, and we're going to move on to the other direction. i got to find a way to make this whiteboard not wiggle so much. This is not about wiggling, this is about doing math. All right, next direction of the proof. 
we'll write our assumption in blue. Now we, we assume that A intersect B is equal to A, and then we want to show that A is a subset of B. Whew. So assume A intersect B is equal to A. We'll write the rest of this direction in red. All we need to show is that A is a subset of B. So if we've got some element, we'll call it little a this time, just kick the whiteboard. If little a is an element of the set A, then how are we going to show that it's also an element of B? That's what we want to do. And it's pretty straightforward, follows almost directly from our assumption. Since little a is an element of the set A, and the set A is equal to the set A intersect B, we know that A must also be an element of A intersect B. So since A is equal to A intersect B, it follows from the definition of set equality that A is a subset of A intersect B. So since we know little a is in the set A, we know that little a is in that equal set A intersect B. And then by definition of set intersection, uh, since A is an element of A intersect B, we know of course already that little a is in the set A, but since it's in A intersect B, it must also be in the set B. Again, that's by definition of set intersection. That's basically it. Since uh, every element of A is also in B, we have that A, that was a bad A, we have that A, I'll just erase that, we'll have that A, forget that ever happened, we'll have that A is a subset of B. Again, we just, uh, we assume that A intersect B is equal to A, and then showed that every element of A is also an element of B. Thus, A is a subset of B. That completes this direction of the proof. If A intersect B is equal to A, then A is a subset of B. And that completes the entire proof for two sets A and B. A is a subset of B if and only if A intersect B is equal to A. So I hope this video helped you understand this fun little set theory proof. Again, if you haven't seen my other lesson on a very similar result, try to figure out for yourself what that similar result is for set union and try to prove it. And then you can check a link in the description to my lesson on that similar result. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe to the Swankiest Math Lessons on the internet. Man, I run out of breath doing these things. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I'd rather be out of the way, cause I don't wanna hear what the people say.